Hi, in this video I'm looking at sketching the function y equals 2x squared plus 3 all over x squared take 4. So this is a rational function because it's got a numerator and a denominator that are two different functions. So we tend to label these as other functions so that we can refer to them later. So I've got p and q. Now one of the biggest tools with sketching rational functions is to find asymptotes. And there's two types of asymptotes. We're going to look for vertical asymptotes, which are defined by the denominator q of x, because it's where this function goes to zero that we end up having our vertical asymptotes, because that is where we end up dividing by zero. So if I look at q of x, I want to find out where q of x minus, which is x squared minus 4, comes to 0. So if we do some algebra to this, we get x squared equals 4, and x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. So I know I've got vertical asymptotes at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. I could also have some horizontal asymptotes. So we've got to check for those as well. The horizontal asymptotes are defined by the relationship between these two functions. So as x gets really, really, really big or really, really, really small, what do these two functions sort of approximate as a linear horizontal line? So what we need to do is we look at the degree of my two functions, the highest degree, of which both of these are the same. Then if they're the same, then my horizontal asymptote occurs at y equals a over b, where a and b are the coefficients of my two functions. So for p of x, that's my coefficient there is a, and my coefficient for q, well, there's a 1 in there, and that's b. So my horizontal asymptotes occur at 2 over 1, or y equals 2. So I've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. The next thing I can do which could help me is look for the y-intercept. So the y-intercept can be a very useful thing because my graph might go through a y-intercept. And that's where x equals 0. So if I look at my graph, when I sub in 0, I've got 2 times 0 plus 3 over 0, oops, we got the squared, squared, take 4. So that gives me negative 3 over 4 is a y-intercept. The next thing to look at is zeros of this function itself, or x-intercepts. So this is where y equals 0. So if I try and see what happens when y equals 0, I've got 2x squared plus 3 over x squared take 4, all equaling 0. Well, if I multiply the denominator up, that gives me just 0 equals 2x squared plus 3. And bring that minus 3 over and divide by 2, so I get negative 3 squared over 2, which means that I'm going to have to try and find the square root of a negative number which means that there are no real zeros to this function. So now that we have all the information that we need, let's try and graph it. So let's get up a grid and let's try and graph this function. So let's move to some space. So let's draw in some axes. So my vertical axis and I'll put my horizontal axis a bit further down because most of my stuff is happening above the x-axis because that's where my asym horizontal asymptote is. Okay, so now let's put in our information. My vertical asymptotes occur when x is plus or minus 2. So x equals negative 2 gives me a vertical asymptote going up there. And x equals 2 gives me a vertical asymptote going up there. And my horizontal asymptote occurred when y equals 2. So I have a horizontal asymptote going across where y equals 2. 
And I have a y-intercept at y equals negative 3 quarters, which should be there. So I'll just label that point 0, negative 3 quarters. And I have no real zeros. So that's my basic outline. I'll get rid of the grid because it's not particularly useful to us anymore. So now let's have a look at what happens to this graph at different points bounded by my asymptotes. So I've got three vertical sections to my graph, three places where I've got to worry about what's happening to my x. So I start thinking about, well, let's have a look at this part first. This is when x is less than negative 2. So I have a look at p of x, which was 2x squared plus 3, and I have a look at what happens to it when x is less than negative 2. Well, if x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, we get a bigger x squared, which is going to be a positive, times by 2 plus 3. So that means that p of x is always going to be positive. So as x gets further this way, we're going to be positive p of x. I can also have a look at q of x, which was x squared take 4. What happens to this as x gets further and further negative, well, that's going to also be greater than zero as well. So that means that my overall function, which is p of x over q of x, is going to stay positive the whole time. The other thing we can think about too is as I approach this zero, that means that my denominator is approaching a really, really, really small number. So as I approach negative 2, x equals negative 2, I'm approaching dividing by 0, which means I'm shooting up to infinity as I get up here. And as I get smaller and smaller negative numbers, I keep getting bigger and bigger positive numbers. So it means that generally overall my graph is approaching that asymptote. So the first part of my graph sits up in here, these, this corner between these two asymptotes. So I get that curve happening. I then have a look at what's happening in the middle here. So what's happening between these two asymptotes? This is between x is negative 2 and x is 2. So I'll just have a look at that maths up here. If I look at p of x, I've got it written down here. When x is between negative 2 and 2, p of x is positive because negative 2 sits it as positive, 2 sits it as positive, 0, it stays positive. So everything sort of in there is positive. So p of x stays as positive. If I have a look at q of x and I have a look what's going on, all my numbers are going to stay between 0 and 4, with x being between 2 and negative 2. So that means I'm going to be negative, because I'm going to be always subtracting or 4, and I got negatives. So my q of x is negative. So that means when I look at my overall graph, which is p over q, I've got a positive over a negative, which means overall, if I divide that, I've got less than 0. I'm negative. So my graph is going to always stay negative. The other thing too is as I approach this asymptote, I'm approaching a more and more negative infinity. And same with this asymptote, I'm getting more and more negative. So I'm getting closer and closer to dividing by zero. Which means that my graph is going to curl up. And we're going to curl up towards this point here. So evidently this point here is likely to be a maximum for us. And I'm going to do that kind of a curve. So we asymptote towards these two lines at x equals 2 and negative 2. And I don't really want to cross my y intercept because it sits in the middle, so it's likely to be a maximum for us. So then I finally have a look what's happening to the right of my last asymptote. So this is when x is greater than 2. So I have a look. Well, p of x... What's going to happen to it when x is greater than 2? Well, we're just going to keep getting more and more positive because as I put bigger and bigger numbers in for x, I just get bigger and bigger numbers, so I'm going to be positive. Q of x is also going to be positive because I'm just going to keep getting bigger and bigger numbers, so I'm going to be positive. So that means that overall my graph 
which is p over q, is going to be positive because I've got a positive divided positive. And then as I approach really close to 2, it means that q of x in my denominator is approaching 0, so which means I'm going to be asymptoting there. And at this point here, which is where I'm getting further and further away from 2, I'm going to be getting these two closer and closer to this asymptote. So I'm going to curve probably a bit better than that. Curve down towards that asymptote if I can get it to work. There we go. So there we have it. That is the graph of y equals 2x squared plus 3 divided by x squared take 4. And the process is bound by finding vertical asymptotes when my denominator hits zero, horizontal asymptotes, which is defined by the relationship between my two graphs, my y-intercept, any possible x-intercepts or zeros, and then what happens between each of those asymptotes. And we get that graph there.